let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight o lord our rock and our redeemer amen good evening dearly beloved thank you for joining us in today's devotional holy week service i see little more than what we had on monday and tuesday probably the credit goes to the women's fellowship <laughs> they had the fellowship meeting and they brought all the members here so i thank the women's fellowship for bringing more people today we have been meditating on the i am sayings of jesus christ from the beginning of this lenten season so far we have finished uh, eight meditations eight bible studies and today is the last one <clears throat> anyway even though it is not in the gospel according to st john we find it in the book of revelation written by st john so this is another very very important uh, claim that jesus proclaimed to the whole world i am the alpha and omega now you will see this picture in different places in altars and in uh, altar table cloths this alpha is the first letter in greek and omega is the last letter in greek they also had 24 letters and the first and the last is alpha and omega and jesus repeatedly said i am the alpha and omega and we all know the new testaments were written in greek because that was more like english of this modern days and at the time of jesus even though they had their own vernaculars people spoke greek as a common language even romans learned greek and many of the literatures were in greek writings of socrates plato and so many philosophers so new testament was written in greek now we read jesus saying i am alpha and omega what does that really mean it means christ is all in all he is enough for me for my personal life for the whole universe for the whole history jesus is enough he is the alpha and omega as i was reflecting on this particular theme alpha and omega the beginning and end is jesus christ i was reminded about a person's testimony <clears throat> this person was shanmugam nadan he lived in jaffna and he was convicted for committing two murders and he was tried in the court and he had his wife and daughter and the family employed a lawyer and they actually sold the tali and paid the fees for the lawyer and the, all that the lawyer required is that that shanmuganathan should say in the court that he didn't commit the murder now as he was tried in the court he stayed in prison and one missionary met him and told him about jesus christ and he said jesus loves you too and he died on the cross for you too and he has taken all the punishment that you have to endure in the eternal life now if you believe this you can receive the salvation then after reading many passages along with the missionary shanmuganathan decided to accept jesus christ and in the court when the judge asked him you are accused of committing two murders do you accept your crime and everybody was looking at him his wife and daughter was looking at him the lawyer was particular 
because he asked him to say deny that that he did not commit the murder when the judge asked him he said your honor i committed five murders not just two i accept that i am guilty and the justice was really shocked he had never seen such person in the court legal court so he adjourned it and took him to his chamber and asked him what is this you are just accused of two murders and people said that you didn't commit it then now you say you commit you have committed five murders and shanmuganathan said sir i accepted jesus christ he has forgiven all my sins even though i take the punishment according to the law of this land i know i will inherit eternal life because i can escape from this legal court but i cannot escape from the royal court of god then the justice who was a buddhist sri lanka so he was amazed and he said i have to pass the judgment he said fine death sentence was passed and he was about to be hanged on a particular day the day before that he was supposed to be hanged he received baptism and his christian name is bricken rich now he was hanged on the next day and after that the relatives were called to take the belongings of him bricken rich as they took the blankets and pillows they found a paper under his pillow there he wrote a beautiful tamil poetry that became a lyric and tamil congregation till now sing that lyric yesu nesikirar jesus loves me and the whole song is about that and one particular stanza is this aasai yesu ennai anbai nesikirar adai nenaithu avar anbin karathul aavalai parappen i will fly to the arms of jesus christ and later on the church took it they composed a tune and still now we sing it jesus loves me he began his faith journey with jesus christ and he, he ended his life on earth with jesus christ knowing fully well that his life is in the hands of jesus and he will give him eternal life now i would like to divide my sharing with the two parts one we will go through the bible verses which categorically affirms that jesus christ is the first and the last alpha and omega <clears throat> then i would like to bring out four how to understand it in four different setting one in the chronological setting then in the universal setting then in our life setting as well as our faith context let's go through the bible verses now it's not just jesus who uttered it first that i am the first and the last even in the old testament we see isaiah proclaiming to the whole world that god is saying he is the first and the last look at these verses isaiah chapter 41 verse 4 who has performed who has performed and done this calling the generation from the beginning next the lord i the lord the first and the last i am he so even in the old testament jehovah affirms that he is the first and the last now let me share with you another verse 44 isaiah chapter 44 verse 6 thus says the lord the king of israel and his redeemer 
and the lord of hosts i am the first and i am the last beside me there is no god the other day i shared uh, with uh, those who came on the day that in the chorus that we sing there's no like there's no god like jehovah we sang it when uh, on saturday see that's a wrong statement bible doesn't accept that even though in the early jewish thinking they believe that jehovah is their god and baal ashrot and other gods are there and other people worship their own gods they believed in polytheism it's true i accept that <clears throat> but during the time of isaiah and hemos hemos the truth that there is only one universal god there is no other god beside me says the lord became the prominent truth and people held on to that here we is a proof text i am the one the first and the last there is no god what about other gods they are not god gods at all they are not god at all thus statues stones wood that's all that's why st paul was bold enough to say even if you place something before the idol nothing happens to the food if you are strong you can eat it doesn't matter but if suppose somebody says no this is precious this has a spiritual value if you eat it you will have blessing then don't take it because if you take it you will accept their statement that is a holy one and their god is true and the god has blessed it and you are taking a blessed food no when they say it don't take it but if they simply give it you eat it doesn't matter because there is no god beside our god okay let's go on to the uh, the implication is that god says i am absolute authority i have absolute authority i am in control of everything i am the only one that's what we say in nicene creed even though people say the nicene creed week after week some christian thing we have jesus they have player that's a wrong belief so wherever i go wherever i am posted i clearly tell my congregation this is what believe don't think otherwise we have jesus they have other gods no there is only one god there is oneness of god unity of god let me share with you the other bible verses <clears throat> in revelation 18 i am alpha and omega and the description is given there who is who was and who is to come in the old testament we just have two statements the first and the last that is i was i am i am i am that i am now jesus adds one more phrase that is i was i am who is at, at the same time i'm going to come that's why in the book of revelation we have these three phrases who is who was and who is to come the next verse revelation chapter 22 verse 13 i am the alpha and omega the first and the last the greek words are protos and eschatos the beginning and the end is a protos and telos telos means you know the telescope okay the telos that is the end so god is in the beginning and god is at the end now this statement that talked about jehovah now jesus claims jesus claims i am in the beginning i am going to be in the end the next verse there's some more verses in revelation chapter 4 1 verse 4 grace to you and peace from him who is who was and who is to come so this is very particular to jesus christ because only he can say i was i am now i will come again okay next in verse 17 this is what we read but he laid his right hand on me 
saying fear not i am the first and the last the living one i died and behold i am alive for evermore okay next verse revelation 4:8 holy 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 is the lord god almighty where do we see it where do you find that phrase particular phrase holy 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 isaiah yeah chapter 6 that's the old testament now we come to new testament jesus says i was and his and is to come so he is claiming the status of god holy 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 is the lord almighty who was and is is to come then next verse now let me move on to the implications as i said i want to understand this claim i am omega i am alpha and omega in four settings one in the time setting chronological setting before that i will i had just remember one uh, tirukkural i don't know how many of you know this agara mudala teacher nu solli mudichirum pagala eduthellam aadi bhagavan mudatre ulagu as a or ye is the first letter from which all the letters follow the same way god is in the beginning all the things proceed from him that was a beautiful statement by tiruvalluvar and using the first three chapters many claim tiruvalluvar must be a christian okay i leave that aside <laughs> but we know that god is in the beginning now this claim by jesus christ i am alpha and omega clearly says that jesus was from the beginning to the end or as we read in psalm 92 from everlasting to everlasting the what god now i have given many passages that clearly tells that jesus christ was there from the beginning and you know the bible verses I, anyway we will be sending this notes to through whatsapp probably you can look into the bible passages and we know that jesus christ is eternally god the next one in contrast we are finite god is infinite we live in a time framework or in a limit we are born in a particular time and we die in a particular time but if we believe in jesus christ we will live forever and ever but at the same time generally speaking all humans are mortal they are finite we live in a particular time but we have a truth that we believe in one god who was there from the beginning he was the one who created adam and eve if i ask the question i don't know how many of you will ask answer this anyway you will uh, you, you can answer if i ask what's your grandfather's name suppose i ask what is your grandfather's grandfather's name or grandfather's 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 name no we won't but god knows he knows who we are and he knows who are our children are uh, who are our children and children's children so it's good to know it's really a satisfying thing or a comforting thing that we worship a god who knows our ancestors and he will know he knows all the generation that is going to come in our family families but we worship god who was there from the beginning to the end okay next one <clears throat> okay now bible clearly attests that christ was from the beginning genesis chapter 1 there we read god created this world and the spirit of god was hovering over the waters 
and God created through word. Let there be light. The sound came and it created light. So God's word has a power. Now John says, the word was with God, the word was God, and the word became flesh. That is Jesus Christ. So Jesus was there from the beginning. Next verse. Moses Thakun Sur Sur Parnan Okay. Then we have another beautiful verse. Isaiah chapter 63, verse 7 to 10. There we see the passage talks about God Almighty, the Lord. Then the same passage talks about the angel of the Lord was there and he was the Redeemer. So we can apply it only to Jesus Christ. And the same passage that we find in Isaiah also talk about the Spirit of God. So in Isaiah chapter 63 we have all the three, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The next one. Now, people ask me this question, particularly in the youth fellowship. Pastor, if Jesus was there from the beginning, what was he doing during the time of Old Testament? He was simply sitting at the right hand, uh, doing nothing. <laughs> what was he doing? What was Jesus doing? Actually, in, when I was conducting a youth retreat, during the question time, one person asked me, <clears throat> Pastor, a Hindu asked me this question, but I didn't know how to answer it. Then he said, my Hindu friend said, this virgin birth is already there in Hinduism. And he said, we have many stories where gods will have a relationship with human ladies or girls and they give birth to children. So he was asking, how about the virgin birth of Mary? Was Jesus born with the relationship between God and Mary? That was really shocking to me, that hurts us. But we have to answer him in an intelligible way, in a rational way. So immediately, even I never thought of that, so I was a little confused. And immediately I prayed in my mind, Lord, give me the answer. Immediately I remembered, and then I told him, see, there is a difference between the stories that we have in Hindu faith and what we receive through the Bible. Now, they talk about children born to ladies or girls in relationship with uh, their own gods. Now, in, that, in these stories, the children were born, conceived and born. Whereas, with regard to Jesus Christ, he was not conceived at that time. He was already existing. We are formed in our mother's womb. Before that, we were not there. Okay? We came, to, came into existence only after when we got conceived in our mother's womb. But whereas Jesus, he was already there. He was there at the time of creation. He existed right through the Old Testament. And then he simply entered into the womb of Mother Mary and was born. That's all. So that is the basic difference. That's why we accept virgin birth. Now again the question comes, what was Jesus doing? I'll give you the answer. <clears throat> Many Bible scholars have studied this and come up with this view. That is, wherever we find the phrase, the angel of the Lord, if it says simply angel, that refers to angels. But wherever you find the angel of the Lord, you will see Jesus Christ. Why? Because the angel acts like, acts as if he's God. I've given many Bible verses. 
the angel of the lord appeared to hagar the angel of the lord appeared to jacob the angel of the lord uh, jacob invokes the name of the angel of the lord when he blessed grandchildren in judges we we read the angel of the lord appears to gideon and when he offered sacrifices to god the angel touches us and accepts it in the same way uh, manova and his wife they saw angel of the lord and they also offer and the angel of the lord accepts it how can an angel accept the sacrifice offered to god only god has the right to accept the sacrifices now we have many references in the book of daniel the angel of the lord or the stone or the man the son of man of course in uh, daniel chapter 3 verse 25 you remember the story of shadrach meshach and abednego and even when they were put in furnace there was another person and the king says the f- the image of the fourth person looks like the angel of god looks looks like god so we know that jesus christ time and again came into this world appeared to king uh, appeared to people the best example is this in uh, exodus chapter 3 where moses encounters god if you go and read the passage it's really amazing first he will see the burning bush he will come close to it and he will see an angel of the lord actually in the beginning it says the angel of the lord spoke to him as they were conversing he asked the angel of the lord what's your name if it was a real angel it should have told him that i am just an angel instead the angel says i am that i am or i will be what i will be i am yahweh jehovah so that was a clear proof that jesus christ was there in the time of old testament he was there from the beginning to the end okay next uh, moses okay now we have another proof text in john chapter 8 verse 56 to 58 there we see jesus christ talking about abraham when people question him <clears throat> how can you see the father what sign you will bring sh- or show us jesus said your father abraham reso- rejoiced that i would that he would see my day and he saw it and was glad then So the Jews said to him you are not at 50 years old and have you seen Abraham and Jesus said to them truly truly i say to you before Abraham was i am so Jesus himself confirms that he was there from the beginning and he was active in the old testament times now some people ask me why Uh, did abraham wanted to see jesus's time and when he saw jesus he was there in heaven when he saw jesus he was happy many time i asked this questions um in the times of our none of them gave me the right answer but i have come up with the right answer that is abraham was happy because his sin would be forgiven only if jesus dies on the cross we all know that abraham committed mistake he also committed sin he also lied he also had doubt on the promise of god so abraham also made mistake so he was waiting for jesus christ to come and die on the cross so that he could receive god's forgiveness that's why jesus said abraham wanted to see my days and he saw it now he is happy okay then we move on <clears throat> the next one is in the context of universal setting 
Now, Jesus claims I am Alpha and Omega, not only with reference to time. I was there, I am going to be there, now you are living here, now you will come to me. Not only that, there are few Bible verses that clearly says that Jesus is going to bring everything together. So the claim of Alpha and Omega actually refers to all-encompassing God. He has created everything and he is, he is going to hold on to everything together. Let me share the few Bible verses. We know John 1, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. That refers to Jesus Christ. Okay, move on. Now we have an important verse. In Colossians chapter 1 verse 18 to 20, it says, And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. Okay, the first one. Then, for in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. So the God head or the Almighty, all the powers of God was in Jesus Christ. And through him to reconcile to himself all things were on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of, Je blood of his cross. That is, Jesus Christ is going to reconcile everyone. And he is going to reconcile everyone who believes with God. Now the amazing thing is that Jesus is not only going to reconcile everyone who believes in him, he is going to reconcile the whole creation. For that I want you to read Romans chapter 8. <clears throat> From verse 20 to 30, there we find even the creation is waiting for the salvation, waiting for Jesus Christ. Why? Because there is enmity even in the nature, wild animals. That's why we have Isaiah chapter 11 where we read when Jesus comes and establishes his kingdom, there will be peace among the animals also. Okay? You remember the passage? Okay? All the wild animals will become peace. The lion will eat straw. Okay, a child can play with the cobra. So there will be peace. So Jesus is going to reconcile everything to him. That's our goal. We are waiting for that day. So the next one. Now with re reference to our life, personal life. Because we are born through him. John clearly says, those who believe in Jesus Christ are not born out of flesh, nor will of a father. No, they are born of God. More than that, the whole universe, wherever we find life, it was given by God. That's what we read in John chapter 1, for in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now, what guides other people, other non-Christians? It's the life. That shows them, if you protect life, that is good. If you destroy life, that is bad. So, all the people have this light. And Jesus Christ came as a true light, telling them clearly what exactly is, is light. Now, this light, it doesn't stop with our personal life. It continues. And it continues in eternal life. There is a beautiful event that took place in the life of a, a Vaishnavite. His name is Krishna Pillai. Krishna Pillai. When he took baptism, he was called Henry Alfred Krishna Pillai. Okay, H A Krishna Pillai. And his descendants are living in, uh, in Kellys. 
they are members of St. Andrew's Kirk. He was a staunch Vaishnavite. He opposed Christianity initially. Later on, when he came to know about Jesus Christ, particularly that he died on the cross for our salvation, he accepted Jesus Christ. And all through his life, he led a good Christian life. He was a very, uh, very, very good scholar in Tamil. So he wrote an epic, like Kambaramayanam, he wrote Rachanya Yatrigam based on the pilgrim's progress. So, he wrote the book. Now, when he became very old, when he was in deathbed, a missionary called Amy Carmichael, probably you remember the Dona Wood, <clears throat> she started a home for the children, particularly those who were rescued from the Devadasi system. Okay. She was invited and she came and he was unable to speak. He was just opening his eyes and closing it. He couldn't speak anything. And the family said he was not eating anything for many days. So Amy Carmichael offered a prayer and took uh, just to find out whether he responds or whether he is conscious of the prayer and the people gather around him. So she took uh, cardboard and wrote in Tamil Yesu e -ye -su, and showed it before his eyes when he saw the word the person who was not eating for many days lifted his hand slowly drew the letter with his finger e -a -su. Then his hands dropped. After some time, he died. That act symbolizes that all through his life, he was sustained by Jesus Christ. Jesus was enough for him. So even in our personal life, we can say, Jesus is enough. In Tamil, we have a beautiful lyric, Yallam Yesuve, Yanak Yallam Yesuve. Then there is one more song, Yesu Podume, Yesu Podume. Jesus is enough for me. In my life, to sustain my life, to be active in life, to be happy in life, and to be sure of our eternal life, Jesus is enough. Let me conclude with the last one. <clears throat> the next one, Ba. This is about the life. Okay. The fourth one is, in the faith context. In our faith journey also, we need Jesus Christ. He is the Alpha and Omega in our faith life also. In what way? We have a beautiful verse in Rome, in the, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, I think it is Hebrew. Anyway, uh, I just remember that it is from Hebrew chapter uh, 12. Yeah, sorry, it's not Romans, it's Hebrew. Hebrew chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight, sin, which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Here the beautiful verse clearly says, we are called to run our race. Imagine yourself in the track. There are many audience. Okay, many people sitting in the audience place. And they are your ancestors. Your father, your mother. Probably you can think of Peter, Paul, or the Old Testament character, Isaiah. And so many people, they are sitting in the audience. 
Now you are running the race. They are encouraging you to run the race that Jesus Christ has marked for you. Everybody has a track. Everybody has a track. God has called you to lead your life in a particular family, in a particular profession or a particular place of work. God has marked our track. We are called to run in our track. Don't look at the other people's track. Don't run in other people's track. Okay? God has given you a particular track. Run in that. Now, as the Bible verse says, throw away all the weighty things. Don't put on the suit and run. <laughs> Don't carry the suitcase and run. Throw away everything. Okay? With lightweight dress, you run. Now, looking at what? Not at the audience. Hi, mom. Hi, dad. No. Looking at Jesus. Looking at the end. He is the founder and perfecter. He is the one who started your race and he is going to end your race. So I always tell my uh, Tamil congregation, I am going to go to the line. I am going to go to the line. Then you see Jesus Christ holding the thread, <laughs> looking at you. So in the same way, he is the one who started our faith journey. And we are going towards him. And he is going to receive us in his arms. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for this blessed day. We thank you for enabling us to study your word, particularly concentrating on your claim that you are the Alpha and Omega. You are the first and the last. You are in the beginning. You are going to be in our end too. Yes, Lord. We started our journey in this world. Now, after this life on earth, we are going to come to you. Yes, Lord, help us to walk or run in the track that you have marked out for us. Looking at you, throwing away weighty things, all our fears, our cares, anxieties, just looking at you. Oh, Lord, you are the beginner of our faith and you are going to be the finisher of our faith. You are the one who created us and you are going to come to you and live forever and ever. Lord, help us to hold on to this truth and lead a good Christian life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Shall we all stand and sing hymn number 320, the offertory hymn 320. 